Hello, have you ever wanted to learn basic engineering concepts from someone with a psychology degree? Well, you're in luck because in this video we're going to be talking about torque, what it is, why you should care, and how to measure it with a few basic tools inside your very own shop. Let's get started. All right. So the reason I'm doing this video is because I have these two motors and I'm working on a project maybe and um, for reasons I want to measure the actual torque output of these. So I figured this would be a kind of a good opportunity to explain some of the basics of torque and kind of you know help people wrap their head around it because it's really not that it's a simple concept but um, it's very very useful in calculating drive trains and things like that. Obviously my channel has a lot to do with combat robots but any kind of robotics can benefit from this information. So that being said, what is torque? Well, torque is quite simply rotational force. So let's say I come up to you and I'm going to push against you. You know, that is a standard force. So I'm going to exert like 2,000 kilograms or you know, maybe like 3,000 or more. I'm going to exert that kind of force against you. But a motor rotates around a center axis. So torque is rotational force. It's basically the amount of force that you can exert in a rotational plane, if you will. Once again, I have a degree in psychology, so I might get some of this terminology wrong. But generally speaking, it's the amount of force that you can exert from that center axis out a certain amount. So in the case of force, it is measured in, you know, newtons or kilograms or whatever it is, whatever force unit you're measuring that in. But with torque, it is measured in some sort of force component and then also some length component. So foot pounds or ounce inches or gram centimeters because we really have to pay attention to how far out from this center axis that force is being applied because it changes. We can't apply the same amount of torque here that we can apply out here. It lessens dramatically as we go further out. So that's the basics of torque. Okay, so this begs the question, why should you care about torque? What do we need it for? And quite frankly, I'm a little bit uh, disappointed that you would ask that question because you should always endeavor to learn as much as you can. But I'm going to look past that. So we have this tiny little motor right here, right? Do you think this can move a 200 pound robot? Well, probably not. But why? It has 900 RPMs. It should be, you know, fast enough to move it. Well, it doesn't have enough torque. It doesn't have enough power to overcome that inertia and actually move the thing forward. Maybe if it was geared down low enough, you know, all sorts of caveats like that. But ultimately what we want to determine is we know how fast the motor can spin. Now we need to know how much power it has to actually push the robot. And I'm using power just kind of universally here. I understand that power is a true thing, but you know, does it have enough push? Does it have enough oomph to move the robot? And that's what torque can tell us. So we can look at two motor constants to kind of get an idea of the um, parameters that we're interested in. So we've got KV and KT. I've mentioned KV previously in um, other videos, and KV is quite simply the um, uh, speed constant. Um, I think it's called the velocity constant, something like that, whatever it is. You take KV, which is a um, function of the motor, and you multiply it by the amount of voltage that you're putting in, and that will give you the RPM. So if you have a K V of a thousand and you put 10 volts into it, you're going to get 10,000 RPM. That is the output that you're going to get from the motor. The KT is very similar. It is the torque constant and it is usually a number in ounce inches, gram centimeters, kilogram, whatever's. It is a number that when you multiply it by the amperage that the motor can handle, it will give you the maximum amount of torque, usually at stall current or something like that. So using the KV and the KT, we can ultimately determine how fast that motor is going to go and how much work it can do, how much force it can apply on that wheel to rotate the thing and make the robot go. Before we get to testing these actual motors, I wanted to kind of talk about the concept of the relationship between RPM and torque. There's really no free lunch here. So you have a motor and it has a fixed amount of power output. We throw these gearboxes on the end of it or they come with a gearbox and then we have that final RPM output. Well, what if you want to make the motor go a little bit faster? So you put on a different gearbox. Now it's a little bit faster, but your torque's going to go down. Okay, so we're going to go the other way and do a slower gearbox or uh, more of a reduction and get more torque. The two are always going to be kind of proportionate. You can only get a fixed amount of power out of this motor. 
in the example that I used earlier about this motor driving a 200 pound robot, we could gear this sucker way down to like, you know, one RPM or a half an RPM, and that would give us gobs of torque, but it would be very, very, very slow. You also have to think about this in terms of wheel diameter. If you start getting really large wheels, one revolution of that wheel is going to travel a lot further than a really tiny wheel that's only going to travel that much. And this is how torque plays out, is the amount of torque that you're going to exert on a much larger diameter wheel is going to be significantly less. And that's because one RPM is going to make you travel a lot further on that single wheel. So it is always this trade-off. If you use a much larger wheel, you're gonna go faster, but you're gonna get a lot less torque doing it. And if you use a smaller wheel, you're gonna go slower, but you're gonna have a little bit more torque. So always something to think about with that trade-off. So here is my lovely little setup. I've got my gram scale set right there. I have my power supply hooked into the motor, which is in this little block. It's elevated off of the workbench just so this is kind of nice and parallel. And then I have a little 3D printed lever arm that will press against the scale. So how this works is when I turn on the motor, it's gonna press down against the scale. And whatever this reading is in grams, we need to multiply it by the length of this lever arm. This is 7.63 centimeters from here to there. So whatever this is, multiply it by 7.63, and that is gonna give us our torque in gram centimeters. So let's go ahead and test out this motor. So it peaked around 62, and we're about a half an amp, so it seems about right. I'm gonna swap this out with the other motor. So now I have the other motor hooked up. Let's see what reading we can get off of it. Okay, so it peaked about 87, not bad. I've crunched the numbers and here's what I've got. The larger N30 motor, came out at 89.8 grams multiplied by 7.63 equals 685 grams. So that is 685 gram centimeters or that converts into 9.5 ounce inch. So not bad, a little bit lower than I would expected, but that's fine. Reality is always a little bit different than the spec sheet. The smaller motor, the N20, produced 62.8 grams worth of force multiply that by the 7.63, and we end up with 479 gram centimeters, or about 6.6 .6 ounce inches. This is fantastic. This motor weighs about 30% less than the larger one, and we end up getting about 30% less torque. So that's perfect. All of this um, ended up being pretty perfectly linear. So the question I had in my mind is if I go with the larger motor, am I gonna get proportionately more torque for the weight? The answer is, Yes, yes, I will get 30% more torque for 30% more weight. So pretty interesting stuff. So hopefully you got something out of this. Um, go ahead and check out my magnet video. It has a lot of um, tips and tricks on how to calculate the drivetrain. That's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna plug this into that calculator and determine essentially how much weight I can carry on this platform using four of these motors, maybe using some magnet downforce to increase that effective weight. These are the types of things that you need to do and this is the math that you need to calculate to figure these things out. So. Hopefully you got something out of this and learn a little bit more about torque. As always, check me out on my Facebook page for any updates to my channel. And thanks for watching. See you in the next video.